Welcome back guys, a different setting for me today. As I've just started another multi-million pound project, I thought that I would vary my content and start giving you guys hopefully some useful tips on to how you can improve things in your life that I've learned along my journey. Today, we're gonna to go over five tips that might be keeping you poorer than you like. And they're five things that I've had to break over the years to increase my level of wealth and success. Now, wealth and success can be measured in many ways, but today we're gonna to be looking at finance and things that you can improve on in a practical sense that will improve your journey towards increased wealth. And the first thing is understanding your financial portfolio. Now, we all have a financial portfolio and the reality is a lot of us don't understand what parts of that portfolio disappear out the door each month and we don't realize. So it's really good to keep up to date with where your money is going. It sounds such a basic notion, but not all of us do it. And I think by understanding your non-negotiable payments, your indulgences and nice to haves, it just puts you in a much better place to understand how to rejig your finances, be in a position of empowerment, where you're doing a good job, where you can improve, and maybe what you can emit from that financial portfolio that isn't serving you. We all have those things we're all spending money on, things that maybe if we knew the amount that was going out the door each month on those things, that we would probably have a little rethink and either reduce or omit them. So now that we understand our own financial portfolio, the next thing I would say is to make sure that you are giving yourself a priority. Now we're used to that notion on social media in terms of self-care, self-priority, and finance is no different. So when you have your income, however that's arranged over your financial year, say it's a monthly salary, you make sure that you allow for yourself first. So you become one of your non-negotiables that we talked about earlier. So when you're paying your bills, your rent that you can't not pay, you also, allow a nominal amount for yourself and you can decide what that amount is but that is an amount of money that you do not touch each month you pretend that you don't have it and it sits to one side and we'll talk about what that money can do for you later on but if you set that money aside you will automatically reprogram yourself to not be as overindulgent when it comes to paying for extra starbucks going to the pub an extra night a week and you'll have more of a perspective as to what a sensible expenditure amount is for you. Quite often, if it's just sat there, you will spend it and you will just live month to month waiting for the next paycheck. Starbucks already has enough money. Make yourself rich before you help Starbucks get even richer. So whilst you're looking at your financial portfolio, you may have found some debt in there and understanding good and bad debt is a really useful tool when financial planning. As a society, we've been really normalized to accepting credit and any indulgences, we are quite happy to put on credit or maybe make up shortfalls in bills because we haven't been organized with our money. Now, the perks that we get from taking out credit are very, very quickly wiped out as soon as we start to incur additional charges such as interest. If you are poorly managing your credit cards and loans and things, and you are paying higher rate for things, that's the first thing to get in order and understand that that sort of debt for you is not good debt. And it only works if you are very, very well managed in your finances. And these companies are making their money banking on the fact that you will mismanage your finance in that way. Good debt is definitely something to consider in that if you are in education and you are making self-improvement, if you are investing in your home instead of renting, if you are looking at rental portfolios and things, then there are forms of good debt, which is an investment to you where you've calculated it and you understand what your liability and commitment is and what the potential profits will be in the short, medium and long term of that investment. This is probably my favorite favorite point and one that I think you guys will probably relate to the most. Now, I'm an extreme example in that I was brought up in an ex-Marines household and I was taught that more, more, more equals more. The more you go to work, the more that you earn. And yes, it is true that the more you put into things, the more that you can get out. But from a financial point of view, to mix up your revenue streams and not to rely on that more is more attitude can be really beneficial. So having a foundation of a salary where the hours that you work equals your pay in a basic sense, mixing those up with things that you don't need to put your time into as much that will still be there as passive income. Salary is very linear in that if you say you lost your job, your revenue stream stops until you find another one. Whereas when you have those areas of passive income, 
They're supporting you financially so that you can weather all kinds of storms. So we talked earlier about putting our little nest egg away. And once you have hit a level of security where you have enough savings that will pay your bills on a rainy day, you can then look to invest that money. So for me, it might be camera kits so that I can improve my YouTube channel. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Or you can put it to some kind of side hustle that will give you that passive income. And it isn't a reflection on the amount of hours you put in at the beginning you'll need to invest your time in learning and some money maybe in some kit but after a while the idea is that that part of your financial portfolio runs itself and I now have multiple revenue streams which means that I can diversify and I can inject myself into other areas knowing that those other things have my financial back and it gives me freedom to try new things new businesses take a few more risks and your wealth planning becomes a lot more interesting and there's a lot more potential there to succeed not delegating is something that I have had a very difficult learning curve on and I will always do more and I will burn the candle at both ends to get extra things done and I remember when I bought my first portfolio property at a very young age I was staying up all night to get things done painting ceilings building kitchens and when I realized that I could inject my skill set and be more time efficient doing something to make money that I could pay someone else to do their skill set more time efficiently and I could get the place rented out a lot quicker and get to that passive income sooner that started to work much better for me so to give you an example in a day-to-day -day life setting if your flat is really untidy and you just can't take it anymore you just have to get all the laundry done and get all the cleaning done and it's stopping you from working on your passive income revenue stream which you are using your little surplus nest egg for as we've discussed earlier in the video then it might be time for you to delegate so you can spend that time on your passive income revenue stream and you can delegate to somebody who will get that job done faster and it also has additional perks in that it will give you a better environment to work in and you'll be more time efficient too. Another example, you will be tempted to delegate your coffee making and somebody making your lunch before you will delegate in something that invests in your increase of wealth. And generally, people can be unprepared to pay for good advice because it's not something that they can physically hold or see. And the coffee, you get that instant gratification from, don't you? And you get the convenience of somebody making your sandwich. But the benefits that you would get from grabbing a financial advisor or having an accountant that can save you money on your tax bill is a really good way to spend that money in delegating on something that will help you in the long term rather than in short term gratification. So those are your five tips of this video. And I think I'm gonna carry this on as a little bit of a theme because I've just been chatting to you guys and it seems to be a really good way of helping you guys with some bits that I've learned along the way. It gives you the opportunity to get involved in the comments and for you to teach me things. If you haven't subscribed already, I would really appreciate you hitting that button and maybe giving me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. The next video that's coming is five emotional things that are holding you back from increased wealth. And I could definitely do about 200 tips on that one. So I think it will be an interesting challenge to condense them into five. But thanks for watching this one, guys. Let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next one.